Knights of Apollo, what is up, guys? Welcome back to Rise of Mordor. We've got a great one today as Gondor is under siege. We've got this really cool Gondor, uh, Gondorian settlement. Uh, it's uh, not too big. It's not too big. Uh, there's a lot of streets and stuff you can go through, and it creates some interesting uh, defenses. Also, look at, the, look at this gate over here. Look how cool this looks. It just looks fantastic. It looks really good. So... Let's really quick look at the forces of darkness that are uh, going to be attacking us today. So all the defenders, the three defenders, we're all Gondor. Uh, the attackers on this side, uh, we have um, Mordor. So Mordor is here, of course, the big, the big baddies, that being Mordor. And then over on this side, we got two forces here. Uh, one being Mirkwood, and we see the uh, Mirkwood trackers. Look how cool these guys are. Pretty cool. You know, you definitely... Like, it would be kind of cool to dabble into the orc, like, subgroups of, like, specialties in terms of, like, unit specialties. and Like, lore-wise, like, get behind or, like, try to, like, figure out, like, what kind of units would they have? You know, in terms of, like, how much we know about the orcs in terms of, like, different skill sets, I don't think we know much. But, like, there would definitely be, like, an elite kind of orc, archer, sneaky type type force I, I can imagine you know running through Mirkwood anyways I'm going on about nothing really and then we have rune the runic boys from the east uh, so the Easterlings um, are gonna be here on the on the battlefield so those are the forces of darkness and this is already underway as siege towers are now attacking the walls and uh, what, do, what do we got here we've got some veil men-at-arms ready to hold so pretty decent infantry ready to hold uh, the walls and our plan going into this one is to try to hold the walls as long as possible punish the enemy as much as possible to try to uh, you know kill as many and then if we do have to fall back hopefully the terrain here will give us the edge on whatever's left of excuse me whatever's left of the attackers uh, so I am saving a lot of my reserve, like the good guys in reserve, like the really skilled guys. I got some Gondor sword infantry. These guys just look so cool. I love these guys. And then over here, we do have some fountain guard as well. So the fountain guard are, um, you know, really, really good at holding choke points. That's for sure. And um, yeah, so... Uh, it's going it's going pretty well. It's going pretty well over here uh, my opponent So I'm defending this by myself essentially my opponent. Uh, it's kind of taking a slower approach You can see that this fight is already going down and he's got infantry Attacking the streets already now Gondor on this side has sent up some Gondor swordsmen to kind of hold back the enemy and uh, you know prevent this uh, this uh, pathway and then we've got another uh, unit of infantry pushing up as well. So Gondor is going all in. Whoever's defending this side is going all in with his uh, specialty units. He's got the giant axes here of, and I'm probably going to mispronounce this, Loss, not Loss Norak. That's not even close. Loss Norak? I don't know. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they're, they're going to hold back Rune. And I'm actually really surprised. The cool thing about watching this replay is that, uh, you know, I didn't really focus this side of the battle because I was on the other side. And so it's going to be kind of fun to watch, like, what happens here and how this plays out uh, in a detailed perspective, you know, because I wasn't able to watch uh, that closely. Uh, but, yeah, so far Gondor is holding pretty well. The siege towers, unfortunately, look like they have been conquered. Uh, they don't seem to be firing as... Uh, Mirkwood is now sending in some Goldor blades uh, to try to clear out this street. And it does look like they've got a pretty good position here. They've got Gondor kind of surrounded in two fronts. Uh, these these blades here are definitely going to do a lot better compared to the one in the middle. Uh, because, you know, they're surrounded by, by infantry. So, very cool stuff there. Uh, let's go back over here where finally we are getting attacked. Now, my plan going into this one is to hold not every... Like, I'm not going to put infantry all along the walls. I'm just going to hold the points where they can run down and potentially attack uh, the, the inner works of this settlement. So, I'm just trying to... That's, that's essentially what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to set it up to where, you know, uh, we've got um, units locked in. We got unit, units stuck in. Uh, that way, my archers, which I do have some archers set up perfect hill. Like, this is just 
perfect positioning. Uh, they're going to be able to um, fire down on, just like that, down onto the infantry that is, um, you know, that's stuck on the walls. It's just a, it's a, I, I used to call this, I still do, I call it fish in a barrel. That's essentially what you're doing. You're, you're limiting the infantry into one small p uh, space, and then you can use your archers to uh, just open fire and um, soften them up and do a lot of damage. So, very cool. Uh, back over here, we have infantry that um, still have not engaged. Uh, again, just waiting patiently, waiting for my moment to strike, and I think I go ahead, here we go. Yeah, I'll go ahead and send them in now that he's committing a lot of units in into the wall or onto the wall. And I've got, see, what kind of infantry is this? This is the Gondor Sword Militia. So I didn't make the funds super high. So we kind of had to deal with uh, lower end units to, uh, you know, if you want a big army, you got to bring more lower end units. And as I kind of like going a little bit in between in terms of quality and quantity when I'm, when I'm doing defensive, uh, you know, armies. Oh, the gate is already under attack. Look at this. I, I you know, it, it, it's been a while since I played this battle. And I remember the trolls charging in, but not this early. And the Olog High are here, so just, of course, this scene always reminds me of um, the Return of the King, uh, the Siege of Minas Tirith, when, you know, Gondor's holding that main gate. Gandalf's like, you know, whatever, whatever comes through this gate. You know, such an epic and simple speech. I don't remember um, if he said that in the books or not. I don't think he did. Uh, oftentimes, I confuse the quotes from the movies and the books all the time. Um, but yeah, it's just what a what an epic, very stoic kind of speech. Of whatever, whatever comes through this gate, we will hold because we're men of Gondor. That's just so, so stoic and so motivating, inspiring. You know, it's it reminds me of my my dad. He always tells me, you know, when things get tough. And you just want to quit. You just kind of tell yourself, you know, whatever it takes, you know, whatever it takes. And you just, it's like a mantra. You just keep telling yourself, whatever it takes, whatever it takes. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's the same kind of like, same kind of um, similar quote where it's like, whatever comes through here, it doesn't matter. We're going to hold. I don't know. I'm going on about nothing right now, guys. But yeah, very cool. The trolls look awesome. We've seen them before, but they look so good, and I could watch them all day. The animations are custom. They're great. Uh, it's just fantastic, fantastic job. Uh, back over on this side, um, you can see that the attackers are making some progress, but really both sides are pretty stubborn. And this is just a tricky situation for um, for the attackers. And I kind of wonder, you know, I'm looking at this attack. And I wonder if the attackers are making... First off, I don't know if they should go through the gate here. This is just looks so easy for the defenders to hold. They've got a unit of spears holding. They've got some trolls running in. But, you know, you can just hold this off with one unit. Get some archers to fire down. I don't know if the oil is... I don't know if the oil is going on or what. But I don't think they need the oil. I mean, they can just kind of hold here and hope for the best. Um, but yeah, I would I think if, if if I was attacking what I would have done is Maintain control of the walls. I think I would have focused on clearing out all the infantry on the walls And then once you secure certain locations on the walls I would get the archers up on the walls and just kind of fire down uh, And that's what I would do personally um, But it's over, always easier said than done. You never know how that's gonna play out But again that that might happen uh, with the attackers here. They might actually be able to do that. I just see that they're they're sending a lot of infantry over to the ground floor here. That, um, you know, I, I just feel like this is a tough... When you send the infantry to the ground like this, it's tough to win. Because look at how the defenders have just engulfed them. They've surrounded them. And it's just... And now they've got these uh, Prince's Coast Guards. They're going to be able to just surround and have that advantage where if he just stayed on the walls uh he would have not been surrounded he uh it's definitely a grind don't get me wrong it's not an easy fight it's a siege battle look how cool these guys look fighting each other but yeah it's not an easy fight but you know they could chip away at the numbers and they're not completely engulfed 
Uh, you know, it, it just, it looks like they're kind of surrounded, but it really it's just everyone's just mushed in. And then once you gain control of different sections of the wall, um, you can fire down and uh, do some damage to the infantry on the ground, which would cause the infantry to like be like either sit there and take it, or they they'll fall back away from the archers, and then that will give you the winner window of opportunity to storm down and you know try to get your men out of this like back to the wall situation. Um, but yeah, so far really good job from both sides. A tough fight. The defenders are doing great here. Oh, the tower falls. Look how cool that is. That was pretty cool. I don't know if it killed. I think it just killed a ton of these units. But are all these guys dead? No way. Did, did these guys die from the rubble? It's possible. I don't know. They are breaking after the fall of the tower. That is unfortunate because that's a lot of good men wasted. That's like three men gone. And then we also have another unit really pushing far. I also like this. The attackers really need to push their, their attack and try to get around these these defenses and just try to get by them but yeah that's that's the current situation let's go back over here where we're still holding still holding against the trolls so i've sent in a lot of forces to just continuously sending in forces these trolls are tough um, if we look at them i think they haven't lost a single one and i'm not really using the right tools for trolls and now I'm sending in another unit of Hillman of Lam, Lam, Lamdun, Lamdun. Um, but I'm sending in another unit of Axemen because I'm just throwing bodies at the trolls, essentially. I like what's going up on the walls. We're having a lot of success on the walls. And it looks like, I mean, just at a quick glance, my numbers are very good. Like, there's still a lot of troops here. So it looks like it's going to go very well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a tough fight. And the trolls are, are definitely causing some some issues here. Um, we've got archers that I did use archers on the trolls, but unfortunately, uh, I did not kill any. But the archers are now going to turn into anti-troll infantry <laughs> pretty soon. My ally, which he didn't have to do this, he didn't have to do this, but I do respect the move. My ally sends over a unit found guard, which is which is his general. He probably saw what was going on. He's like, oh, geez, Apollo, like, you've got nothing for these trolls. But in my mind, I was thinking, you know, eventually they'll fall. Like, eventually, I'll have enough inf infantry to chip away at them. But now that I think about it, I think you do need some heavy-duty heavy duty, anti-troll equipment to take care of these guys. You can't, like, just sending units after units isn't going to do anything. It might over a long period of, of time. Uh, but you definitely want to send spears jabbies um you know pikes to try to deal with these trolls because these little shorts short axes and, and swords not gonna do much not gonna do much against these trolls their, their skin is like leather you know it's probably stronger than leather uh but yeah stuff is uh, still going on up on the walls as we speak so that's it's been it's a pretty straightforward battle on my side and now the fighting has continued over on this side of the wall it is intense it is um cutthroat so to speak um where both teams are just desperately just clinging on to this wall you know unit after unit is being sent into the fight and it really is going to come down to attrition who's going to lose more is it worth defending with all these troops is it worth attacking uh non-stop with all these really when it comes to the attackers they don't really have a choice i mean i mean i guess they could fall back and reorganize and regroup and push somewhere else or, you know but it's tough and at this point i think the attackers are fully committed whoa look at all these arrows look at that going after the uh, black root black root uh veil archers oh, my goodness very very good volley there that's so i there's nothing better than watching arrows fly in i mean Obviously, it's a very cinematic thing because movies, it's a classic movie scene, right? Of the arrows flying. Because it is truly, I mean, imagine seeing that. Imagine not only seeing that, but it coming towards you. Imagine seeing the volley of arrows coming towards you to where there's so many that it darkens the sky. I mean, that has to be one terrifying feeling. 
you know it's it's got to be something similar to uh, more modern warfare where you hear a mortar coming down you know when you play hell let loose and you hear a mortar coming down and you're just praying it doesn't hit you that's it's got to be something similar but with this one you see it because it's a big cloud it's like a big cloud of birds coming for you so yeah that's that's one of my favorite scenes in total war any kind of battle type game is watching arrows fly overhead especially when they fly over troops and land into uh infantry it's so cool and then over here over here excuse me they've got his axemen who are getting shot by arrows or at least they were you can see the arrows left behind here um, but they're going over to reinforce and this is definitely gonna be a costly blow for the easterlings as they're gonna lose this infantry there's no way they're gonna be able to fight their way out of this big mess so um yeah you can you can see that we're still like halfway through this battle and um a little less than halfway and there's really hasn't been much of a change in in terms of control of the settlement the attackers still making their way these trolls man they finally lost two trolls and it's probably mostly to thank the uh, you know thanks to the fountain guard uh, because they're the ones who are first off they're just better units not only are they equipped with better weapons they're just better units compared to the um bow, the bow militia that i have in here <laughs> so uh yeah they're gonna get some kills and that's good to see but you know there's a oh he, yeah there's a whole nother troll unit in here so definitely a major problem you can see i still have some reserves over here uh I'm getting to the point where I'm running out of reserves and I don't know how much longer I'm gonna hold out here I've got another spear unit moving in this is good they're gonna help deal with the uh, the trolls these are the oh, I don't even know how to pronounce this I'm so sorry but uh, yeah these spearmen are gonna move in and, and support the fight and join the front line uh, over on this side a standstill just total standstill up on these walls but we made a lot of we made a lot of progress if you kind of just zoom around if we panel through this fight there's definitely some some gondor troops dead here but we did get a good amount of kills with our bows um when we you know clustered them up it's kind of hard to see it but we are doing a good job and we're we're chipping away at the attackers now that's the that's the great thing like even if they break through my force here and again look in terms of reserves, I've got an archer unit that I'm thinking about using. Um, I've got another archer unit back here. I think I most likely will fall them back. I got a spear unit. That's about it. I've pretty much set every set everyone in or close to in, and he, the attacker, they've pretty much sent everything in. But here's the difference: I've got units sitting back in reserve, so I'm not too worried about it. If he does break through, he's gonna have to take take on fresh fountain guard. Excuse me. Fresh Fountain Guard. So back over on this side. Uh, we got the Pel uh, Pelagir Marines. This would be a great... This unit would be a great anti-cav unit. That is for sure. Oof. So Rune looks like they are getting some ground here. They've got archers in the mix too. I can't believe the attackers already have archers that have used up all their ammo. And then um, we've got... We've got... Uh, what are these? No, not Gondor. What is, oh, Goldor Blades. These guys just look so cool. But they're not they're not as pushed out and they got to deal with these halberds these coast guard it's such look at these guys this is gonna be such a tough fight and sure enough they're already breaking both units so that's not looking good that's not looking good at all it, it does feel like the attackers are starting to lose their edge in this attack they really struggled to take these walls but the bounce of power is still in their favor this is still anyone's game so um it's not a time to put your guard down you know now is not the time to put your guard down this is going to be potentially a problem my spears are in the mix i'm now throwing in some axemen into the fight axemen into the fight 
And then we've got some orc warriors mixed in as well on the walls. Uh, but yeah, I mean, again, if they break through, I guess over here, I'm a little concerned about the walls because I don't have any reserves to prevent them from pushing and flanking. I mean, I'm still very worried about the trolls. I can't believe the trolls are just still wrecking. They're still just wrecking this uh, this little gateway. And these, I mean, it's so cool to see the trolls be this effective. I think the uh, evil forces definitely need this. You know, they need that troll element because that's that's one of the things. Like, if you compare this game to like um, Third Age Total War, the uh, the mod for Medieval Two. The trolls were that balancing factor that the evil forces need. Now, I don't know if that's the same for this mod, because there are a lot of good infantry for Mordor and the evil factions that can hold their own against the good infantry of the good factions. Uh, but the trolls definitely add this element, a perfect combination with these uh, quantity-type armies, these big Mordor orc armies, where you mix in the really crappy infantry with the deadly but small units of trolls. You you combine that and it's an overwhelming force. And that's kind of what we're seeing right now. It's just these trolls. It's just, it's amazing how good this mod looks. It's amazing. I, I can never get over how wonderful this mod is and how much progress uh, they've made. So really really fantastic so yeah the fight continues over here the veiled men at arms uh, surrounding these orc warriors there we go and uh, we do break them on the walls which is really good because I'm starting to lose the gate I'm starting to it's just overwhelming my men are like come on guys what whatever comes through this gate it's like they just keep coming <laughs> These trolls just don't die. Oh, no. No. Someone get help for this man. I don't know why I'm doing like Jurassic Park music, but. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they're, they're breaking through. They are breaking through. This is a major problem. Uh, you can see my allies sent over uh, some Javis. They've used up Pelliger Marines. He sent over Pelliger Marines. Still not enough to take care of these trolls. And now he's got the Cav. Now the General is in the mix. Oh, this is not good. We've got some quality units breaking through here. Let's go to the other side, though, because we haven't seen it in a while. And you can see that the attackers are definitely making progress on this side. And why? Well, they've got their archers up here. Uh, they finally got some archers up here and look at the damage they're doing this is why i mentioned guys it's so important for the attackers to gain control of these walls and use it against the defenders um and that's what they're doing i just don't think they did this enough i think if they did this more see like don't even bother shooting the arch the, the arrows from this position there's a certain thing about this angle you know how they have to fire upward over the walls to get to this infantry back here and it's it just the arrows lose that like i don't know how to it loses their their power so to speak as you fire like that i mean i'm not talking like realistically here i'm just saying like it's so much better to get on the walls and use your bows and just fire down directly i mean look at the carnage look at the blood of gondor uh from all the runic uh runic arrows so that's definitely helping the infantry get an edge here. All right, let's go back over here. Yep, they've officially taken the gates. My troops are breaking. I've taken troops that were victorious on the walls, and now I am um, sending them into this main fight. It looks like because the general, um, they're bleeding through this way. You see how they're bleeding, and they're just kind of pushing um, and getting some good flanks. So I need to uh, I need to set up a defensive L. See how I'm kind of like forming a line here. That's what I'm doing. I'm gonna try to hold. I'm gonna, I form shield wall against this nasty Mordor general, Nazgul, servants of the Eye. So yeah, we're trying to hold them back, and um, it's not looking too great as they continue to push through. I got some Gondor troops are very... Oh, wait, these Gondor? Yeah, Gondor and Mordor. Very lucky. Very lucky to get out of there. 
Oh, this is actually really funny. This is really funny. So, these two units eventually stop breaking. <laughs> and, okay, I, I'll, I'll show you later. Let me turn on the map. So, um, yeah, they've broken through the gate. And at this point, they've got their elites of the elites fighting me. Which is good, right? Because we're chipping away. We're making the elites tired. Another unit of uh, Marines has come over. And they're throwing their Pila. Or their Javis. At the, uh, the trolls. And, okay. So, this is the funny part. My unit returns from breaking. His unit returns from breaking. Eventually, look at They're just chilling. They're like, there's this moment of clarity. There's this moment of like, you know, the, the troops have finally stopped breaking. They're like... You know what? There's some orcs over there. Let's go kill them. <laughs> Let's go kick their ass. You know, so they run over and um, yeah, I'm going to go charge them. I don't think he even realizes this. Yeah, he doesn't. And I'm going to be able to get a free charge on him. Come on, man. You got to kill him. Not a great charge. My unit was pretty scattered, but I was worried. And uh, the orcs are breaking here. Come on. This is like the least important battle of the whole siege, but I'm just so, I'm emotionally connected to it, okay? I'm, I'm emotionally drawn to this battle because both these units were breaking. Oh no, our allies general's fallen. Oh, and then my unit breaks. They're like, you know what? The city's probably gonna fall. We're out of here. We're out of here. So unfortunately we do lose. Dude, get out of there. What are you doing? He's like, huh? <laughs> oh, you idiot. Uh, so he does win there, unfortunately. Uh, but the, ba the balance of power is really close to even. I would say it's still in favor of the attackers. Uh, we head back over to this side. The attackers are going to take this wall. But after so many casualties, I'm really on both sides. So he's just got to fight through this Gondor sword infantry. There's so much Gondor sword infantry on this side. It's really amazing because we were playing on lo not low funds. I think the funds were still like high or ultra. Like, units are very expensive in this mod. So even on Ultra, you can't get, like, a stacked army. You know what I mean? There you go. Nice kill. So, yeah, they just got to break through that. It shouldn't be too much longer. They're very depleted. Down to 43. So, yeah, they're going to they're gonna keep on fighting the good fight. Um, the general... Um, I think the general killed the Fountain Guard general that was helping us earlier. See how there's Fountain Guard dead here? Yeah, I think Mordor's general took him out, unfortunately, but that's okay. His sacrifice will not go in vain. I will fight on in his memory. And uh, we're on the verge of collapsing. As soon as this uh, Marine unit falls, which they are losing this fight. This Cav unit is so, so good. So they are losing this fight. Yeah. But this is what we got for reserves. And you can see, like, the terrain of this map. And look at us fall back. It's kind of cool how we're falling back. Um, but the terrain of this, this map is really, really favorable for the defenders. I mean, this is where the victory point is. And look how narrow this is. It's so easy to hold. But, um, yeah, we're going to be able to hold pretty well and use the infantry. We Again, I saved... I've got one, two, let's see what I got. One, two, three, four units of infantry left. Two of those being archers that have full ammo. Full ammo. Now over here, the my wall is officially fallen. Fa fallen? Uh, fallen. Uh, but I feel like we've done enough to, to hold it and, or we've, not to hold it. What am I saying? We've done enough to where the point where we've severely weakened them. And it's going to be difficult for the attackers to try to you know, break through. Now, I've taken one unit of infantry and set up a little defensive perimeter perimeter around the entrance here just so these guys won't get flanked. So I just kind of took them down from the walls to kind of hold. I probably shouldn't have done that because now that I think about it, trolls and horses can't get up here. So it's probably safer just having all my infantry up here, but oh well. I guess I was assuming they were going to send normal infantry and I was going to try to hold this line and delay a little bit more for the troops on the walls but yeah um now over here the archers these archers are stuck here 
I assume, like, they were here since deploying here. Like, the player deployed them here, and he can't move them off. I don't know if it's just, like, a glitch or a pathfinding issue. So, unfortunately for Gondor, or whoever's troop this is, they're not going to be able to move forward. So, guys, at this point of the battle, it does slow down quite a lot. Um, and we just kind of wait for the attackers to regroup and um, we'll start the video we'll just kind of fast forward here cut the video to where the next stage of fighting unravels all right folks we're back um the trolls have fully charged now i didn't really want my ally to hold this position up here he's got some fountain guards uh with the support of some archers like kind of not way up here but there is a, a choke point that he wants to hold here and um, I saw that, and then I looked at the balance of power, and I noticed that we actually have the, well, it's still, it's still slightly in favor of, of the attackers, but I was feeling very good at this point, to the point where we might be able to, like, ride out and meet them. You know, ride out and um, potentially surround and kill. Uh, the the attackers because I'm looking at their forces and I don't really see like there's a couple units that are threatening like this halberdier unit of the Easterlings but archers don't have ammo these archers have ammo but it's not a big deal I'm really too afraid of the archers these units are pretty depleted except for the halberds two units of halberds that are scary we got the general over here that could be threatening but overall it just doesn't look that scary and also I. It, I feel like the attackers are making a big mistake here. First off, this just looks so cool. Fountain Guard versus Trolls. That is awesome. But yeah, I feel like the Trolls are making a big mistake here where... Um, they shouldn't be blobbing up their troops. Uh, they shouldn't be blobbing up their troops over in this area. And I think he, he should have just like went uh, all the way around and joined forces with the Easterlings. Uh, the fact that his entire army here is being held off by a few Gondor troops. Now it's a little bit more because he threw in the Axemen. But this is not going to go in his favor. You know, taking on the Fountain Guard like this is not going to go in your favor. It's going to be a tough, tough fight for them. So, yeah, that's a lot of troops. That's a lot of troops. I've got my archers set up on this road. Uh, I don't think they're firing at anything. I think I was just holding fire. Just because... I don't know if I... Whether I did this on accident. Because sometimes what I do with my archers in siege battles is I put them... I turn off fire at will. Because I want them to use their ammo, like, specifically on on specific targets. Uh, so, I could have forgotten about that. And at, at the time, maybe I was like, oh, just whatever. Shoot at anything at this point. And maybe I just forgot to turn off fire at will. Um, but yeah, yeah, uh, they are, they are just kind of sitting there getting shot at, not a big deal, but I still like our chances, and, um, I do start to move my general over to this front. There is a back pathway that the attackers could use, but I'm just kind of using my general to kind of hold it. And then that's when I get the idea of, you know what? Like, these guys are just sitting here. This army is dying. The trolls are dying. The infantry, now that the trolls are gone, the infantry is going to fall really fast over here. So I was like, I was thinking, you know, I think we could push out and deal with this. I really do. So pretty soon, my plan is to surround the enemy. I also notice... That they're shifting units over to this side. I assume he wants to attack this ramp over here and then potentially attack over here. But the more he pushes over to this side, the more my I start to lick my lips, so to speak. Because I could easily push down these fountain guard and get him like from behind. Um, while he's pushing this this uh, this ramp. This ramp. So, um, yeah, that's that's kind of what's going through my head. And at this point, the balance of power is now... I would say that's in our favor now. I would say for the first time ever during this battle, the balance of power is in our favor. We just killed a huge chunk of forces here, mostly my ally. And 
now they're gonna push in some troops. And Thunder Sword Infantry holding. And there we go. They're gonna go ahead and charge up the ramp, and this is exactly what I wanted. And the Fountain Guard wait. And now we've got Prince's Coast Guards. There's no way they're going to break through the princes. Like, these guys, look, this is such a... In terms of siege defense, this unit just seems so good. You know, be any halberd unit, really. And there they go. They're going to join the fight. And that's going to be really difficult to deal with. And at this point, and here we go. Finally, finally, I'm setting in the fountain guard. I dropped the pikes. You can re-equip them later, but I've dropped the pikes to make them move a little bit faster because they fully committed. Now I can get behind them. Now they're shifting all of their troops over, which is fine because now I, I go ahead and give the charge order to move up these troops as well. I'm not waiting anymore. I'm not waiting anymore. At this point, I feel very confident in our defense. I feel like we are going to win this. You know, all we have to do is just push out and surround. And just the way this map lays out, it gives us that option. It gives us that option to surround these forces. And even if we weren't surrounding the forces, they're still losing. They're still losing. So I, I honestly believe that this battle was won on the walls. We did, as a team, we did so much damage on the walls that, you know, they even though they took the walls eventually, they were so wounded and so beat up that they just don't have enough to take on this final stand area, this, this high terrain over here with the elite troops that we have. And here we go. I go ahead and move these troops in. And they're going to go ahead and fight the uh, Halberds. The bounce of power still is really close, but it just doesn't feel close. It feels like we're dominating at this point. Now I'm going to send in my my swords because I don't want these archers. And this is a this is a big loss right here too. Archers that have full ammo is pretty much about to be fight uh, about to be fighting in melee. Not a good not a good thing. So as you can tell, guys, there's only two minutes and fifty seconds left. I think it's quite clear that uh, we do take this this victory um, because there's no way that they're going to defeat our force in two minutes and 40 seconds so I'm just going to fast forward here a little bit because I think the excitement of not really knowing who's going to win is over as it is quite clear uh, my fountain guard uh, totally just annihilated these easterling halberds just annihilated and now uh, I'm going to push up the fountain guard and I am going to surround these guys and uh, yeah start chipping away at their their numbers so fantastic and uh he, he does send a cav unit over here i think mordor is sending units over to the other side but it's a bit too late for that uh you know most of these troops are surrounded and uh most of his army is gone because he sent them all in one choke point which uh i think was his biggest weakness I, you know honestly if he didn't do that if he didn't do that, I think if he just kind of sent them with the Easterlings, or at least near the Easterlings where they're fighting together, like he could have sent them down here and then up here while the Easterlings went here or something of that nature, or even go down here. Um, but instead, he just fought Fountain Guard and it didn't end well for them. And there we go, we're in the last 20 seconds and you can see that these forces are breaking. Archers with almost full ammo, gone. And there we go, victory for Gondor. So that's going to wrap up this siege battle, guys. Let's go ahead and look at the end results. I need some water. My throat is uh, pretty sore at this point after all the talking. So GG to all the players. This was during a live stream, actually. So thank you to all the players who joined and made this battle possible. I do appreciate it. This was a lot of fun. Uh, I actually had the biggest army. Look at that. Yeah, the biggest army. So you can see I went with that. I went with quantity, really, rather than quality. Um, I can't believe my general got 184 kills and he only fought in the last like couple minutes of the battle. That's, that's, that's nuts. So, um, thank you guys so much for watching. Here's the kills for the other units as well. Um, here's, uh, may, maybe the attacker should have brought bigger armies. I don't, I don't really know. Maybe, how is that possible? How do these, 
Am I si they only got three kills, these trolls? That doesn't seem possible. I don't know. But thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this battle, and I will see you next time on the battlefield.